I was born in uh, Wisconsin Rapids, which is two miles away from the center of the state of Wisconsin. August 13th, 1949 was birth date. I went to the um, University of Wisconsin, went two and a half years, didn't know exactly what I was going on. Vietnam was going on. And so I spent the next six years uh, in the U.S. Navy. I was in electronics tech. Then I came back and finished up with my degree in engineering. And uh, then I was hired with GE Company and uh, on their technical marketing program, I was called at the time. Uh, it was a two-year program with four six-month rotating assignments. I started in Milwaukee, sales office in Milwaukee, rotated to Mebane, North Carolina. Uh, that plant manufactured or assembled, if you will, low voltage and medium voltage motor control centers. And then uh, I was going on my way up to uh, Plainville for another assignment and there was an opportunity that was presented as outside sales, a sales engineering opportunity in Richmond. Interviewed for the job and that was uh, 1978. And I've been in Richmond since 1978. You know, when you first come out of school and you say, well, what am I gonna do the rest of my, my life? Uh, you know, anybody that says they got it nailed is, is probably fooling themselves because it never quite turns out the way that, you're, that you think it's gonna turn out. Um, when I was with GE, one of my distributors that I was to look after was electrical equipment. And um, I always just kind of liked the way that they did business. And it was, you know, it, it worked out well. Grew the business, they liked that. Um, and then I was, I had been traveling quite a bit and uh, Dick Hedgepeth called me. It was on like a Thursday night. And he says, um, you, you sick of traveling yet? <laughs> And I says, uh, well, what do you mean? He says, I think I want to talk to you. And I says, well, I'll tell you what, Dick. Um, if it can wait for a week, I'll do it. If not, you know, <laughs> I know how things can go. Because I'm on my way to the beach. <laughs> and um, those folks that knew Richard Hedgepeth can probably appreciate the humor in saying something like that. And then on, uh, I started my career with electrical equipment on September 1, 1984. You know, I've always said that in a career, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, go do something else because you do it too much. Um, I don't know where this 40 hour a week ever came from. That was never in my vocabulary. And it's, uh, I'm not different than, uh, all the other folks. But it's interesting that um, in selling, doing, doing the right things, um, setting, the, setting it up, watching it progress and order, orders generally don't just happen. Um, there's some, sometimes I've chased orders for as much as 10 years before it came through. And that was, uh, and it's interesting, is it that much different from a manufacturer to an OEM to distri distribution on user's account? Not much difference. Uh, it's, you know, everybody thinks that there would be a vast difference between the three general markets. It's, it's really not that much different. The end result is getting an order. And in the steps to getting that order are the same whether you're an end user in distribution, you're, you have primarily industrial accounts like, I'm, like I had with, um, with a GE company and then I had some dis distributor responsibility. And from an OEM, uh, it's all the end users. How did the products change over the last 30 years? That's, that's, a, that's a, um, a really an interesting uh, question because it's, if we're looking at 
distribution equipment. We call it panel board, switchboard, low voltage switch gear, draw out gear, uh, medium voltage, high voltage switch gear. Um, the biggest change that has happened is everything has become safer. Uh, there is a, um, people hear metal clad switch gear these days, and that's been around for 40 years. But they really don't, you don't appreciate what that means until you see some old open switch gear. And here in the city of Richmond, at a pumping station, there is actually 34 kV gear open on slates, all open. You can walk into the room, your hair stands up on end. And uh, I had the opportunity to go there one day and uh, the engineer from the city that was with me, he says, uh, don't touch anything. I says, you think? <laughs> Even I can figure this one out. Um, and when I say the safety, uh, you know, everything we are looking at these days, art flash and the way that we communicate. In the beginning, you had to be in front of the gear to even know if it was on. You know, those days are, those days are gone. Uh, it's all Ethernet now. You do not have to be in front of the gear. Like if you engage a breaker or disengage a breaker where there might be a flash there. So all those things just have become safer. And that's, that's probably the biggest change because distribution is still distribution. You generate you distribute and it gets to to the user and there's always utilization voltage and user voltage user voltage that we relate to it from the motor side that's utilization voltage that's why motor is at 460 and the distribution side is 480 and that that difference is for voltage losses because of lead links so that part of it has changed um, Everything else on the control side, and again, it goes back to the communication. Um, that's really the biggest difference. We still have your basic, we're turning something on and off. Uh, in the beginning, you, have a, you had a multimeter. Oh, you had a scope. You had, those were about the most sophisticated tools that you, that you had for troubleshooting anything. You might have a synchroscope for but uh, other than that, you know, really not much. Oh, today we got all kinds of neat toys. You know, we got thermal graphic stuff. We have, we have scopes now. At one time there was, man, if you had a dual tray scope, you're into something. Now, now they got four channel ones. Um, everything has because of the electronics on everything, it's just that it's gotten more sophisticated. Anything that you want to know on a system, you, you, you can see. You know, before, if you knew voltage current, that's, that's about all you needed. Uh, you might know something about watts and KWH, but it is not the depth that you can get just on any meter. If you were on the road in the 60s and the 70s, and even mid 80s, you had to look for a phone booth. There was phone booths. People probably don't even know what a phone booth is anymore. Um, and there was these landlines. We had, um, I think it was 1986, maybe 85. We had a portable phone. They were calling bag phones. They were they were huge. They were they were the size of. Um, an oversized lunchbox for just a phone. And they worked fairly well, as long as you were basically in a city. They weren't too much in the country. So uh, digitally, oh yeah, I mean, getting messages on your phone, knowing what's going on on that, it, it, the pace has just increased. That has allowed business to run uh, so much faster these days. You know. Um, in the beginning, um, very early on, and some folks are going to probably chuckle about this, but in 1984, maybe it was early part of 85, um, Jack Lawson and I and Rick Pugh 
I had to convince management here that um, we should buy a fax machine. <laughs> and, you know, you see now a fax, I mean, you know, really? You really want me to send a fax? Does a fax machine still have its purpose? Yeah, absolutely. If you need that hard signature, that's the way you're going to get it. But that was the beginning, and um, it, was, it was most interesting. With a fax machine, you know, the, everybody was panicked. Oh, we're going to lose, we're going to lose contact with our customers. Things are, you know, all oh, it's it it it's just going to be terrible. <laughs> Obviously, it has not turned out to be terrible, but actually quite exciting. <laughs> you know, and you have to embrace the technology because that's that's still exciting. Just to give you an example, let's reflect on lighting. When I first came in the industry. It was, uh, the GE low mount was the hottest thing going. Metal halide, most efficient light source around was high pressure sodium. GE call it Lucalux. Um, there are fixtures today that are still low mount, and that was back in the early 80s. It was a tremendous fixture. Low mount being you could mount it lower heights, eight feet, wide beam, you didn't have um, spotlights, everything was very uniform light. And then that was in the 80s, early 80s. That was the latest technology that has happened. Lighting was, there, there was no advances in the 90s. I mean, even in 2000, it was the same thing. And then we came up with this LED. All of a sudden, lighting became exciting again because you gave the people that like to sell something to sell. You know, it was getting to be, if taking all that commodity, that's, that's kind of exciting. And that's what I think keeps people in this industry. It's just going to get better. Everybody says, oh, the good old days. Well, yeah, yeah, there's, there's always that. But, um, and make sure that you have the interface with, with people. Don't don't hide behind our communication tools. I see that happening. You know, two people could be sitting at a table and they're texting back and forth. Now, what's up with that? I mean, that's, a, you know, uh, I think that is starting to lose some communication. Uh, so that's what I would say. Embrace change. Um, talk to people. You know, not everything is going to be digital. So, there you go. <laughs>
sweet, adorable Grover. <laughs> this guy here, they also wanted me to give you that. <laughs> <laughs> now there's Grover. <laughs> there's Oscar. <laughs> So, so a, that, that the two sides of your personality. That, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, Oscar and Grover. To the other, rest of the world, it's Oscar. To me, it's Grover. <laughs> the clay, the cup is half full, right? Not half empty. <laughs> <laughs>